Yeah, we're still inside the first half an hour of the 90-minute Sports Max Zone for this um, Monday. And we're switching now to cricket. One of the game's most explosive opening batsmen, David Warner, said farewell to the longest format of Australia's of the game with Australia's win over Pakistan in the third and final test, which concluded at the weekend. The left-hander went out in style, smashing 57 of 75 deliveries as the Aussies cruised to victory at the Sydney Cricket Ground to complete a 3-0 series sweep. Warner played 112 matches as a baggy green in a career which spanned just under 12 years. The 37-year-old spoke with Mike Howard after the match. I think the ears are going to get a break in the change room, which is great. Um, but yeah, look, uh, you know, these guys, they work their backsides off. Uh, you know, the engine room, the big three quicks, plus Mitchell Marsh. Um, you know, they, they, they work tirelessly in the, in the nets and um, in the gym. And, you know, credit to them to stay on the park. The physios, the staff that are behind that is, is outstanding. But um, you look at them, they're, they're amazing. And uh, I don't have to face them ever again in the nets, which I don't do anyway. So um, that helps. Tell us about your own day. You woke up this morning. I'm sure your family was surrounding. What were your thoughts at that stage, David? Um, just a casual walk up to the local cafe, get a, get a coffee with a young one. Um, and then, yeah, I just, uh, just got into the car and um, packed a wine or two. Um, <laughs> shouldn't say that too loud, uh, get in trouble. but. Um, but yeah, no, I, I felt I felt happy um, and really, really proud. And just to come here in front of you know your home crowd with the, with the support that uh, they've shown me and the Australian cricket team over the my my last decade or my career, um, I can't thank them enough. Without without you guys, we aren't able to do what we do, and uh, it's really, really much appreciated. The innings itself, talk us through the innings. It was you finished like the way you started, full of shots, through mid wicket, reverse sweeps, you pulled out every trick in the book, and I can see you smiling about it, mate. Look, we're in the entertainment business and I'm just happy to come out here and, and showcase what I try to do all the time. Um, you know, I started with the 2020 and uh, tried to come out here and try and emulate that. But um, look, I tried to play my shots, go out the way that I had to play. Um, and yeah, managed to get the win on the board, which is great. We saw your girls and your wife, Candice, up there in the stand, your mum and dad. What does family mean to you? Obviously, it's an enormous part of your life, David. Massive part of your, uh, of your life. And, um, you know, without their, um, you know, their support, um, you know, it's you, you can't do what you do, and um, you know I have to owe credit to, to my my parents for giving me a, a beautiful and great upbringing. My brother Steve, um, you know, I followed in his footsteps, um, and then you know came along Candice and, and sort of got me in line. And um, yeah, we've had a, a beautiful family, and uh, you know I, I cherish every moment I get with them. And um, you know I, I loved them to death. And uh, I'm not going to keep carry on because I'll get too emotional. But um, thank you, uh, Candice, for for what you've done. You mean the world to me, and I appreciate it. These boys are up against the West Indies in a few weeks' time. What do you think that will be like for you? Um, I think it'll be quite emotional to watch the guys go out there and, and, and not play and knowing that um, you know, I was able to come out here and, and do what I could do. But as I just mentioned, you know, you've got a great bunch of cricketers here. Um, we are all almost over 30 years of age. So um, you know, as, as time goes by, we're not getting younger, but this team, they're, they're energetic, they're, they're world class and um, they're a great, guy, a great bunch of guys. How would you like to be remembered? David Warner was? Uh, exciting, entertaining, and I hope uh, I put a smile on everyone's face with the way that I played. And hope for the young kids out there can follow in my footsteps. Wipe all cricket to Test cricket. It's the pinnacle of our sport. So keep uh, working hard to play the red ball game because it's entertaining as well. Yeah, wonderful series they are shown live on Sports Max. The Aussies coming out on top in the series. And Fazir Mohammed now joins us to look back at uh, David Warner's career, where he was just asked um, how he would like to be remembered. I would like to ask Fazir, what are his best memories of David Warner? It's an interesting one, uh, Lance, because when you think of David Warner, you don't just think of that entertaining element. But pre-Cape Town 2018, you, you also had in mind that aggression, that ultra-aggression, that always in your face, whether as a batter or whether in the field, even more so in the field, going at the opposition. And certainly his demeanor changed after that chastening experience of being caught right, involved together with Steve Smith and uh, one of the Australian teammates. Bancroft, uh, Bancroft. Cameron Bancroft. Cameron Bancroft, yes. as far as the, using the sandpaper to illegally alter the condition of the ball in that Cape Town test match in South Africa. And the tears and the, the suspension and all of that seemed to change the, that, that ultra-aggressive demeanor but yet he remained 
that very aggressive cricketer across all three formats. And I found it interesting, Lance, that he made that point about entertainer. Because if you recall, when Brian Lara was saying his farewell to the game yeah. during the World Cup of 2007, after that last Super Sixes game against England, his question to the crowd was, did I not entertain you? Yes. And it seems for a lot of players, it matters what the, the audience thinks of them in that context. And indeed, from, a, from a, 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 a David Warner point of view, certainly you'd have to say, whether you love him or you loathe him, that he was very much an entertainer, someone who you knew something was going to happen once he was there in the middle. Yeah, well, you just referenced the Sandpaper Gate scandal, which involved uh, Warner, the captain at the time, Steve Smith, and Cameron Bancroft. How much of a stain would you reckon that has on Warner's career when history is recorded and you look back at this uh, fiery left-hander? Of course, it will be overlooked in the end when you look at the numbers. When you thumb through the pages or, or go on the internet and, and Google David Warner, you'll probably get the data, the numbers, the, the fantastic numbers in all formats. And again, that's something that needs to be pointed out. His captain, Pat Cummins, says that he's probably the greatest across all formats, and that's probably right if you look at those numbers from an Australian point of view. But I think that sandpaper gate thing is a huge stain, not just on him, but on Steve Smith, to a lesser extent on Bancroft, because he was sort of like the Muhammad Amir of Pakistan, where he was being used by senior players yes. to do their dirty work. And I think that is a significant stain for all the talk that the Australians have of playing hard but fair, there's a classic example of senior players being involved in underhand practices. So, so yes, it will be a stain, but in the fullness of time, people sometimes throw those things in the background and just look at the significant numbers on the field from a player like David Warner. Yeah, and you just said, Faz, that he probably, all formats considered, could be Australia's greatest openers. But, you know, you have... There are some big names that he would be up against when you enter that conversation, you know, Mark Taylor and um, uh, Matthew Hayden and so on. Um, but the fact is, T20 cricket wasn't so big in their time. And uh, the added format of the T20 to the ODIs and the Test cricket has given Warner that bigger platform, dimensionally speaking, to, you know, to flourish in, in the different formats. Absolutely. It, it's sort of like how people talk about swimming, yeah. that Michael Phelps can win so many gold medals because there are four versions of the same race over freestyle, breaststroke, backstroke, uh, uh, whatever else, uh, and butterfly. Whereas in football, it's just a 90-minute game. There might be variations that, that gather little attention. But in cricket, especially since the advent of T20 and T20 internationals in the mid-2000s, you now have this discussion about all format players. And that's why a Matthew Hayden will suffer. That's why a Mark Taylor will suffer. That's why all of the great Australians from previous eras, uh, a Ponting, a Greg Chappell, a Bradman, certainly, will never come into that discussion because they never played these shorter formats of the game. So, yes, Pat Cummins was right. You look at Warner's numbers across the three formats, and it's an object lesson as well to our West Indian cricketers. Because we often hear that discussion about the difficulty of, of going across formats and being successful. Well, here you have in David Warner, someone who's been phenomenally successful in the three formats. Yeah, and Faz, whenever you think about good players retiring from their sport, you always wonder how it affects the entire unit in a team sport. David Warner has now retired. Do you think this will affect the quality of the Australian Test team in any way? Or is it that the team is so filled with quality that, you know, another player will step in and, of course, do what he did? Australia had a problem over the years about having two solid, reliable openers until Usman Khawaja was given another opportunity to partner his great schoolboy friend, David Warner. So, so, so now uh, they, they've been very, very successful in that regard. And yes, there will be a feeling out process for a replacement to partner Khawaja. We've heard of Steve Smith himself expressing some eagerness to go up at the top of the order, although the Australian captain and the selectors might seem to think otherwise. But any team, it doesn't matter how good or how great they are, Will, will suffer, will lose some of that effectiveness when you lose a quality player. 
But in the case of the Australians, I would say it happens less so simply because of their very competitive environment and their very competitive nature. The Australians, again, love them or loathe them for the way they play, not just cricket, but play sport in, in male, female, anything. It's all about winning. And they accept nothing better than giving your best wearing the national colors. And that's why the fact that they're number one, the fact that they won the 50 over World Cup, they've retained the Ashes in a difficult series, that they, they've just beaten Pakistan 3-0. Yes, they, they will lose some effectiveness at the top. But again, given the quality that they have and given the attitude that they have, I don't think it's going to be a major dent to the quality of the Australian team. Yeah, Faz, just to follow up on that question from Mariah, I listened to Andrew McDonald, the Australian coach, and I got the feeling that he wasn't too against the idea of Steve Smith moving to the top of the order. I don't know if there is any irony there, given how much you have spoken about 2018 and the Sandpaper Gate scenario. But do you think Steve Smith, a man who has never opened in Test cricket before, at, what, 34 years old, could take on that job and, and, and do it well? I would actually be surprised if the Australians go that way because it would almost reflect a level of desperation mm. to get someone in at the top of the order to partner Khawaja because there are others in the Australian setup. Maybe they haven't been as convincing as the selectors or the, the coach would want, but to... Put, take someone, as you said correctly, who's been so successful in that position, three, four, uh, and in the middle order. Because remember, he started primarily as a leg spinner, batting way down the order before his batting prowess came to the fore. So I, I would be surprised if, if it happens. But again, given what, what you mentioned about Andrew McDonald expressing almost a, a willingness to entertain that thought, you never know that might happen. But to me, that, that would be almost a slap in the face of the, of the openers playing state cricket right now, hoping to take David Warner's place. Yeah, I felt the same as you, Faz. And then I also saw Marnus Lamachain pointing out um, Steve Smith's averages and how his average has gotten better the higher up he goes from five to four to three, where he's averaging 67 at three. And the suggestion was almost, well, if you can average 67 at three, well, you may well just open the batting and you will do well there as well. But we leave that conversation for now for as we go to a quick break and we'll be chatting more cricket after. Stay with us.